that <laughs> they were glad that they weren't there? Who? No. Oscars? Yeah, you think they're glad that they were there, but you think they were glad that they weren't there. Miski? Well, yeah. Good job by you. Uh, you know, that's probably something that you would say one thing but think another. Right? You'd probably say, no, no, we would have took them on. I'm not saying that, you know, speaking for anybody at Yorktown, but I think that that's just human nature. You know what I mean? I mean, don't you want the path of least resistance? <laughs> um, it's, listen. It's a t you're right. It's a tough question. Because, Mike, but it's here's bothered the thing. them for a year Nobody, that Miskayuna knocked them out of the bees a year ago. I know that. But his, if, if Yorktown closes the deal, nobody's going to talk about the fact that Niski went up to the A. No, you're Maybe right. Maybe some real purists. You know, we'll say, well, of like course. Mr. Lax. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, from what we saw out of the owls of Lindbrook, uh, there the path it has some resistance. <laughs> Owen oh, Daly. You like this Lindbrook team, huh? Yeah, I do. And do you know why? I'll tell you why. And Bill Cherry texts this to me right after the game. He says, I enjoyed the game. How great does Lindbrook play together? Well, they do. Chemistry. They do. They're a chemistry-laden team. Yeah. Okay, and that maybe they don't have all the movie stars that some of these other teams have. You're making Dave Moore sick to his stomach. No, why right not? Now. You Dave. are. He's like, come no, on, no. Jimmy. But you know what? Hey, here's the thing. Here's here's my overall state of the union for the Hudson Valley. Okay, it is super weak for lacrosse. It's state championship week. You got the semis and the finals. They got two horses in the race. That's pretty good. They almost had three. I know. We'll I, get to that. I know they did. Give Lakeland Panis. Hey, oh. they, they, Lakeland Panis in defeat made as much news about teams in victory for how they play. Well, you know, it's so funny because two of Lakeland Panis' losses this year energized me. You know how I've gone on and on about right. that Greenwich game earlier right. this year, 9-8. And this one, you keep getting scores, right. you know, following, following Isaac right. on Twitter. And it's like, man, they are not going away. Gut, gutsy effort by them. Coach Lindsay's probably not a happy guy today either. I heard the officiating was not that good. But we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, your <laughs> Is that town, what you heard? Where do you hear this stuff? I hear stuff. <laughs> now, do you think that Scotty Marr said, hey, Dave, take the – Scotty Marr's the – the legendary Albany Univer University of Albany lacrosse coach. Yes. That's where the regionals were played. You think he said to his brother Dave, hey, come on up here, use our stuff. You know, you think he did that? Or is that a recruiting violation? I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I think if he did, we, we, nobody knows about it because, you know, you got to be careful with that stuff. But that had to be nice uh, for the Marr family. Yeah. Uh, Albany Academy never had a chance. <laughs> it was one nothing at this point when Nikki B, Nikki Bonatonibus. That's way too much space for Nikki B. So it's two nothing in the opening quarter. But not beautiful. The Albany facility is. By I the like way. the bubble in the background. Chris Alvarado. Is that where those Thompson boys were working out? Yes, sir. Makes it four nothing. They split the Heisman award too. Connor Veracruz, the Twarton. Yeah, the Heisman. Veracruz puts up Yorktown five nothing at this point in the opening quarter. And then Nikki B. I hope Nikki B carries this confidence into this week because right, this is the Nikki B that people like to see. Moving, grooving, shooting, making things happen. And then Mikey Devukai. Wow, watch the release on this guy. It's quick and it's hard. You love this guy. I do. He's, he, you know what? Some guys just know how to put it in the back of the cage. That's Mikey Devukai. And then of course, the Rutgers bounder, Connor Veracruz, puts Yorktown up 10-1. In the opening half, look at the move here by Alvarado. Feet, swims over, oh, spin. Oh, oh. Hey-yo! Nice bounce shot. I hope they had a good orthopedic surgeon up there at the University of Albany because he left that young man in his wake right there. Listen, 17-5. Um, it's just a you know win and move on kind of situation, which hasn't been the case always with Yorktown. You know, in in, in these moments, in these rounds, and uh, I don't know, I don't know, Mike, what's better in a state quarterfinal that you win 12-11 and you have to make a big stop like we saw on Long Island, right, right. or if you win a game like this, you're oozing with confidence. I don't know. I just I don't know how. You, what's your take? But hey, it's an impressive, emphatic win uh, by Yorktown. Lindbergh ain't Albany Academy, I'll tell you that. And we said it right away. We saw a young man that we did not know a lot about, Owen Daly yes. for Lindbergh. Dominated the game. 
We, you and I have both said it comes down to the first drop of the ball when they place it down. Daly against Palmadesso. Guess who we're talking to? You know, that's in the back of our heads. We know, like, we've been to this game, especially my senior class. We've been to this game a couple times and have been able to get it done. So, uh, you know, we couldn't be more focused. I'm really happy at where we're at right now with the team, our state of mind right now. So we're locked in. We're ready to go. Uh, well, we had walked past Niskayuna uh, walking in here, and I'd be in this field, Niskayuna, last year. I was pretty fired up, obviously. Um, the guys knew what this, where we were last year. We lost here, um, so just kind of set the tone of, we, we weren't going to lose here again and kind of motivated us to want to come out and play a great, great game and, and play hard and just, you know, really kind of come out and, and do what we got to do. Do you guys feel a pressure that you haven't won since 03 or is it more of an excitement that you kind of have a shot this year? Um, I, I would say that it's more of an excitement. Uh, we talked with a bunch of alumni guys um, and they were saying, you know, obviously it's a huge game, but you can't let the pressure get to you. Just enjoy the time that you have left with your friends playing lacrosse. Um, put things in perspective that obviously it's just a game, even though it doesn't seem like it to, to some of the guys. But um, I don't know. We just got to, you know, got to enjoy the last, the last little bit we got here. A week left at, at the most. So going next, you guys are going to face Limbrook. They, I think they won by a goal. Yeah. What's the feeling on them? Um, you know, it's any Long Island team. Any team that comes out of Long Island and wins a Long Island championship is going to be a hard game. You know, if you've heard of them for, you know, 40 years, or if you haven't heard of them in a long time, so. Um, Limbrook's a good team. Uh, they're well coached, and I've watched them on MSG Varsity a bunch of times. And uh, they're a strong team. It's going to be a tough, you know, tough time. Uh, so hopefully, a bigger game. You could, you could tell Mar that was just get that game done with and move on. You're not going to see a smile out of that guy unless no. he can win his next two games. Good job by Isaac Cass jumping in there doing a whole bunch of interviews. Isaac's yeah. a good man. No, you read his stuff. I do. He's I good. Do. He's, he's all over it, and he always taps into the history. And you saw Fusco, uh, very aware of the history, sure. talking about the excitement. We love the little thing with Niski. Um, but the folks of Yorktown should know that just because it's not Garden City, the two-time defending Class B champs, okay, you have a worthy opponent, Lindbrook. And Lindbrook has their own history. Don't forget, 99 and 2000. This is a back-to-back -back New York State champion. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like Lindbrook is going to be all excited, right. you know, to be there. They have a history. They've won a right. bunch of Nassau titles. Right. Okay, so they and they have uh, the horses. And the Stony Brook-bound uh, junior, Owen Daly, uh, put on a show at that face-off X. It's going to be fun. It is. It's going to be great. Uh, it's Wednesday at Hofstra, 5.30. I'd be surprised if it starts at 5.30, probably a little bit later, more like 5.45. Uh, Yorktown, 16-5, and five. Lindbrook, 19-1. and one. Now, those records are as of last week, so there's probably going to be a little bit of movement in the poll. I have said all year that I've been dying to get Bronx fill into this poll for the sole reason that I love what Horgan has done. Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go play, guys. Now, yep. problem was, all those upper echelon teams that they played, they lost heartbreaking games. Mm. Like, they were right there in all of these games. Now, a couple reasons. They weren't healthy. Right. This was a team that was not healthy all year. And if you're a Class C school right now, the last thing you want to hear is that Matt Barons is healthy. And that Henry Grass. You know, Henry missed a couple of games, the concussion, yeah. the whole thing. These guys had 16 points the other day against Greenwich. <laughs> now let's 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 make this note. This Greenwich team they played in the regional final ain't the Greenwich team they played up in Connecticut. Right. A uh, different type of Greenwich team. But what they've done, they built themselves with a schedule that if they took some losses, that's okay. This is a better lacrosse team, despite a 16 and 5 overall record, than the one that weight made it all the way to the semifinals, uh, to the championship finals. last year. When they're healthy. I'm not. I, I'm just going to say this: when they are healthy, they're as good as any lacrosse team in the tri-state. ABC. ABC. One hundred percent. Because they're a C school. That's it. You're not talking just C classification here. Uh huh. No. Nope. If they don't win the state title, bad job by Bronxville. I mean, and it's what he has done there. You've mentioned the college commitments that they never had. Never. And now they have them by the bushel. It's incredible. You know, it's 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 not easy to make a school a lacrosse school in a short period of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And by a lacrosse school we mean winning games, winning, you know, section championships, getting to state, you know, final fours and state championships, and most importantly, getting kids to the next level. Have you spoken to Horgan ever? Uh, I don't think so. Good dude. You're gonna like him. 
I'm hoping to speak to him this week. Well, you don't like Babylon? <laughs> no, listen, that's the other thing. I mean, here's Babylon, you know, maybe, you know, I hadn't paid a lot of attention to Babylon lacrosse, watching them in that Long Island Championship. Babylon has a little football edge to them on the lacrosse field. Yeah, I here, like it. Here's a little X's and O's for Bronxville that Mr. Lax is going to throw out there. Make sure you know where number 14 on Babylon oh. is because he will knock you in to tomorrow. Let's just get through this because it was over. Well, the game's over now. All right, here we go. Michael Crawford, one of his two in the game. It was 2 nothing, two minutes into the game. Henry Grass, Hopkins Bound Jr., you know, above the shoulders, he's fine now. Ain't no cobwebs there anymore. And now Liam Lynch going to continue. He's going to Fairfield. Little bounce shot. So it was 5-1, and there were just six minutes left in the game. Still 5-1. When Barons, who had 4-4 four and four in this game, going to Georgetown, uh, makes it 6-1. It's now 10-2. Grass... Well, the grass is always greener in front of the cage, even if you are playing on turf. And then Grass would get his fifth of the game. This is just 14 minutes of lacrosse. This is a... Well, thankfully, Greenwich had a good kicker. And they got out of there, and they just lost 21-3. <laughs> All right, come on now. <laughs> and now they get Babylon uh, and Carlock and the boys. But, hey, listen, you go to the state championship last year, Mike. There's no reason why you can't celebrate a little when you get back to the state final four. No doubt. You should enjoy it. They should, but they're not going to. But And they didn't enjoy all those losses they took during the regular season either, but they do now because these kids know that was put there for these next two games. Definitely battle-tested. Bunch of tough losses, so we don't want that again, and we know how that feels, so uh, we're going to come ready to play Wednesday and Saturday. How important is it to you having uh, Matt and Henry back in the lineup now? They look like they're clicking and they're healthy. Uh, it's great having those guys back. I mean, they are a uh, pretty good scoring threat, the two of them. Um, and it's just, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier down the offensive end. Do you guys know anything about Babylon? I think that's what you're going to be playing. Um, to be honest, we, um, we don't. Um, we've just been concentrating on, on each game. But um, I know that you guys will have their game on of, uh, of Locust Valley, so we'll be able to watch that, break that down, and, and formulate a game plan. Coach Hare looks great. I was just going to say, you can Which... see what a 21 3 victory will do. He's not doing any of this. Like, ah! Oh! He's got great hair. He's going to watch that Locust Valley uh, game and he's going to notice a couple things. You mentioned Jay Carlock, uh, who will go to Stony Brook to play football, number yeah. 14. He's the best athlete on Long Island. Yes. And he, uh, he you know, he's sort of a, a, a football guy playing lacrosse, but has a lot of lacrosse guy in him. And uh, this is going to be an epic matchup. Also, what they're going to notice is that for Babylon, number one, Luke Sapia, and number four, Nick Santarelli, are tremendous little buzz saws on the lacrosse field. And Santarelli, who will go to Army to play lacrosse, um, was as impressive as a player as we saw all day on Saturday. And we no, saw unbelievable games. We saw A, B, and C, the Long Island Championships, yeah. which are our state uh, quarterfinal. Sure. And uh, it's, you know, obviously it doesn't get any better. Yeah, thank God we stayed on Long Island and didn't go up to Albany because yeah. the game, aside from the last game we're going to show. The games were good. And Santorelli uh, is a lot of fun to watch, and Bronxville will have their hands filled. But, uh, hey, everybody knows it. You know, when you're in Westchester, you know to get where you want to get to, you have to beat a Long Island team. So here you go. 22. Got hurt. Has to. What's that? 22. Oh, the final? No. What? What are you talking about? How many seniors on Lakeland Panis? Got wow. off to the slow start this yeah. year. And then they started to, you know, turn it around for Coach Lindsay. 22 seniors. This was a sub-500 team last year. Beat Mamaronek to win the Section 1 A championship. Then, you know, got to the regional yeah. final. And I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't think this game was going to be Ten close. Goals. They played great. Mike, as we were getting the updates on this game, we were, you started feeling so good for Coach Lindley's team uh. and what they, what, they, what they were embarking on in this game because of how much respect we have for Niskayuna, the Niskayuna team that a team that could finish number one in our polls in Darien. Mm -hmm. Darien needed a, a last second goal to mm -hmm. beat Niskayuna. So you know Niski is as good as it gets mm -hmm. in, in the landscape of lacrosse. Okay, and so if you're thinking Niski against Lake Lampanis, all right, this is this is you know a four or five goal game probably, you know, or a game that Lake Lampanis is going to be you know chasing the whole day, and they weren't. They really really showed up.
They sure did. Um, unfortunately for Lakeland Panis, uh, Niski, as we said, it was good for Yorktown to get out of the B for Yorktown. They came up to the A and they end 22 great young kids seasons up at the University of Albany. Shawnee Murphy he had a couple in this game. That got Lakeland Panis to within a goal early at 3-2, three minutes left. Now 4-3 Niski. Aiden O'Brien, he's very good. This team offensively is a fun team to watch. Got to be an Irishman, and what a ride for Prunty and his career at Lakeland Panis. Gave you everything you want in a player. Yep, Brian makes it a 5-4 game early in the second quarter. Then the guys from upstate Niski start to separate themselves a little bit. Ryan Lawson going low makes it 7-4, but then BP, Brian gets them, well, it, it gets to be a four-goal game. He gets his third to make it a three-goal game again. It's now 10-6, Niski. Kevin, who had four in the game, takes the pass from his brother. Ugh, oh, the Pruntys, man. 22 seconds left in the opening half makes it 10-7. Great memories for these guys, man, Kevin and Brian. Now, it's a five-goal game. Niski gonna run away with it, not so fast. Jimmy Flaherty. Pulls Lakeland Panis to within 12-8 late in the third. And then when Flats gets his second consecutive goal in third of the game, early in the fourth quarter, it's a three-goal game again. Yeah, here they are just hanging around, man. Hanging around, looking for that next run. I watch this cat, Michael Demario, the Virginia bounder against Darien. That's yeah. a Virginia kind of shot right there, too, right? Three goals, two assists as they go on to win the game and end Lakeland Panis' season. 14-11, so now Niski will come to Long Island 3.30 on Wednesday to take on Massapequa, our number one team. Gonna be fun. Uh, you know, it's it's Big Wednesday. Uh, I, there's, a, there's a great matchup in the in the Lindbrook um, Yorktown game. We have we we love what what Fusco stands for, mm -hmm. uh, the Syracuse bound defender Austin Fusco for Yorktown. He's everything you want in a defender. Uh, but we saw Eddie the Beast Buhol, <laughs> who will head off to Le Lehigh after this year. Just a junior, a junior yeah. on the pole. He'll go play for Kevin Cassis yeah. at Lehigh. Uh, but Buhol will have the attention of those Yorktown scorers, no all doubt. those guys we talk about up front. So that's going to be fun. This Yorktown team, they got to go retro, man. They can't be the team that kind of sits in the cave and looks for just take shots. That's it. They will. Take, take, I think they will. Take shots. I think hey, they're coming out fast and loose. I think so, too. Yeah. Uh, guess who's talking a lot this week? Isaac. He's live chatting. Cass. So, perfect night. Tomorrow night at 9. So, he'll get to break down all of this, the, the, the B and the C for Section 1. And then, I hopefully, I'll give him a good lead-in because Jimmy... Oh, man, this is like Seinfeld. Yeah, and I told the guys, I told O'Keefe and Casey, I said, listen, I can't type. I'm not a good typer, so we're bringing in this cat, Mike Monty. You got to get a load of this guy. I mean, he's worth just chatting. So we're going to do it with video. So it's like the old days of a quick 60. Thank you, Stack. Thank you, Bri. The face going back and forth. And I will be picking a special rogue edition of Put a Face on It, where I will be picking the A, the B, and the C on this live chat, and then I'll do the overall state championship picks on our regular Thursday, put a face on an edition. So, let's play prognostication, you. For the Hudson Valley region, they have two teams heading into the semifinals. If they win that, then they have to play a state championship game. If you're Hudson Valley and you have no horse in the race, but you just love Hudson Valley lacrosse, what would you settle for as far as a championship, a semifinal? Do they have to win two for it to be a successful year? Can they win one? If they don't win any, break it down. They both have to get out of Wednesday. So you're saying both Bronxville and yes. Yorktown have to get into the There's final There's no doubt battle. about it. There's no doubt about it. Do, okay, so does for it to be a successful year in the Hudson Valley Section 1, does at least one of yes. them really... I think they got to go two for two Wednesday and one for two Saturday, and I think they will both have a tremendous opportunity to do that. I like the matchups for both Yorktown and Bronxville. I think they're winnable situations. So if they both win, obviously Yorktown's in the poll, but if Bronxville was to win a game or win their next two games, do they finish in the top 20? They have to. For the schedule they played and for what they're going to have to go through, listen, it's, you know, it's one thing to have an opponent in the quarterfinal that you could just kind of breeze right through. 
it gets real now. There'll be no breezing at Hofstra on Wednesday and Saturday. Okay, mark that down. And, and both those programs know it. Uh, both Bronxville and Yorktown know, okay, this is where you got to take it a couple notches up. Because if you don't, okay, one of these teams will put a six-goal run on you and put the game to bed. You know, Babylon came into, came into a game against a team we thought they were matched up great against. They jumped out 7 nothing in this game, right? Yeah. I mean, it was like, and then they woke up, and, but it was too late. It was too late. Can Bronxville become the lacrosse capital of America by Sunday night? <laughs> of America? Well, the girls. Oh, all of a sudden, what about the girls? All of a sudden, Bronxville is Ward the, Melville or the, West Island. The girls had never won a sectional title. Now they're going to the Final Four. Yeah, you're right. Hey, listen. You know, they're do it, it's... But they have to play Bayport Blue Point. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's trouble. That's trouble. And good luck to the suffering girls, too. I was they're throwing going, that they're, out there. They're going, back, they're going back to the Final Four. And uh, to try and exercise some demons, they got tripped up last year on uh, in the semifinals. But uh, the suffering girls are built to win. And uh, it's going to be very exciting. Hey, it's a good time. The Bronxville suffering. The Bronxville got the girls. I mean, I mean, you're right. But like I said, Locust Valley thought, hey... We can play with Babylon. They're impressive. Locust Valley had a great year. They beat Cold Spring Harbor. We all thought it was going to be a great game. Babylon, 7-0. I mean, it was like, whoa, Santarelli and the boys are real. This edition of Quick Hits Hudson Valley is done tomorrow night at 7. I'll be live chatting with the great Mike Mounty. Uh, we'll break it all down, the B and the C, and when that's done, we'll take you right into cast. So uh, this is, I thought you did a great job. I, I, and Dave Mars got to exercise a few demons too for his brother because let's just say Hofstra was not pleasant to coach Scotty Marr as Albany fell to Notre Dame on that epic uh, Saturday. And here's the deal. If people don't get involved on the Hudson Valley live chat tomorrow night, if they both go on to win state titles, we will not do a Hudson Valley show next week if they don't get involved tomorrow night. Is that fair? Is that wow? Seven o'clock. That's an ultimatum. I want questions. That's that. I want a lot of questions. The gauntlet is there. Right there. Yes. It, fair enough, right? If they don't get involved, then we're done with the Hudson Valley as of now. Right? Unbelievable. What uh, do you unbelievable. Think? Only Austin Fusco has better hair uh, than than anybody I've seen. I mean that that is some beautiful coiffe he has there. Oh, it's incredible. But it, it looks better by the week. He's got now, he's got like a big flop, curl, post game. The helmet pulls the hair forward. It, it's like incredible. I, I, I mean, is somebody stylizing him well, after the game? What he should do is you go work for Carvel when the season's over and you come up and he'll just say to you, Would you like a butterscotch with chocolate? See you, everybody. What is that? Mean?